Welcome to the third explainer in the Become a Lender series. If you're watching this, I assume it's because you'd like to generate additional income and you're considering lending as one of the options. So far in this video series, we've looked at why you should consider becoming a lender, how loans are actually working and how they're structured. But no matter how good you are at engineering the terms and conditions of a loan, it can still turn into a disaster. I want to show you how you can avoid that scenario and how you can turn your portfolio into one of the winners. Hello, I'm Thierry, the finance hobbyist, and together with you, I'm on a journey towards greater financial independence. How do you know what makes a good or a bad loan? So far in this series, we danced around one concept that makes or breaks loans for all parties, risk. Here are three ways to manage risk more effectively throughout the lending process. The first way is the evaluation of the candidate borrower. Early in the lending process, you evaluate whether it's a good idea to lend money to person A and on which terms. As a result of that evaluation, nine out of 10 times, maybe your answer will be no. So what is it that we evaluate at this point? Really, it's the chance that you get to see your money back plus the interest versus the risk that you lose it all because the borrower can't pay you back. And you want to make really sure that person A can pay back that loan. And it could very much look like this. Hey, before I give you that loan, I need to verify a few facts about the loan amount and your financial situation. So let's start with that loan amount. What exactly are you trying to finance and how much is it actually worth? It's going to be used for heavy machinery, which is valued around 20,000 euros. So you want a loan of 10,000 euros out of the 20,000 euros that you need for the machinery. That's 50% of the total. How are you going to fund the remaining 10,000 euros? I'll be paying the remaining 10,000 euros myself. So you noticed how the lender is checking the loan to value amount, right? In this case, it's 10K out of 20K euros. And this gives the lender information on how much skin in the game the borrower has. And the lower the percentage of the loan to value, the less risky it becomes for the lender. Because a lower loan to value also signifies that the borrower has far more to lose, especially if they're forced to sell the underlying asset. Let's see now how this conversation continues. Thanks for that first information. Now, I will need some more. Can you give me proof of income and bank extracts for the last three months? I'd also like to know which valuable assets you hold. And could you give me more information on what exactly you do professionally? Oof. That's a lot of information. Why do you need all of that? That's true, it's a lot of information. The salary slips give me an idea of your recurring monthly revenue. The bank extracts will show me how good you are at managing a budget and whether you have any other debts that you're paying back. And the question regarding your assets is for me to understand how much personal collateral you have in case you default on the loan. And then the last question is to understand how stable your industry is. And I also want to make sure that you live long enough in your line of work um, to pay me back. Wow, no sugarcoating things, eh? Um, but listen, if that's what you need in order to lend me the money, then sure, I'll provide you all this information. Remember, this is business. And the main reason why you even consider giving a loan to someone is to generate a profit preferably. The price you pay for not doing your due diligence might be to see your money going down in the swamp of good intentions, poor execution and no refunds. And that's not doing business. That's not investing. That's charity or gambling, whatever you prefer. Moving on to the second way to manage your risk. Get in touch regularly with your borrower and develop a good relationship. Because when things go south, you absolutely want to have this open communication channel. And that will help you to save the situation in such a way that is still advantageous for you and for the borrower. And uh, everyone wins that way. And this is a type of open communication that you could possibly be having. Hey, I'll be having some problems paying back the loan amount this month. Um, I don't feel very good about it, uh, but I 
did want to have this conversation with you now rather than at the end of the month. Can we pause the uh, loan repayments for now? Of course, we can talk about things. Um, so how does this sound? Let's pause the payments on the principal for this month and you just pay me back more of the interest. Would that work for you? Yes, that would definitely give me more breathing room. Thank you so much. Notice how both person A and the lender are interested in finding an amicable solution. An alternative scenario could become very stressful for both parties, leading to broken trust and maybe opening a legal route down the path. So how do you use this information for yourself? If during initial conversations you notice that the communication is not really flowing, that's definitely a red flag. And a third way to manage risk for yourself is educate yourself on the legal framework around lending practices in your country. An example for one of those rules is here in Austria are not allowed to become a professional lender without having a specific license for this activity. And that is just one of the many rules around loans here. And most countries have their own set of rules around loans in place. And that is great. It makes things very clear for yourself and for the borrower, including the options and procedures that you have at your disposal if things don't work out. All right, to wrap up, these three elements help you to determine and manage the risk associated with loans. Doing your due diligence with the borrower before even accepting to give a loan. Keep the communication channels open while the loan is already running and make sure that you're clear on your rights and your duties around loans according to the legal framework in your country. With these three in place, you'll be in a good position to maximize the number of good loans in your portfolio and minimize the bad ones. Now, in previous videos, we considered how loans work, how they can be structured, and now how to recognize good and bad loans. Now that you know all of that, maybe you want to dip your toes into the water yourself. Then you will love the next video in this series where I explain three ways that you can become a lender. Check it out here. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.